Okay, so uh, thank you for all the participants for being here. Before starting the session, I would like to know a little bit more about you. So I'm going to launch the first question and just click the answer, please. The first question is to specify whether you are a high school student or university student. And you need to specify in which grade you are currently at school. Okay, great. We're going to share the results. So you can see that uh, most of the attendees are high school students and most of you are actually in grade 11. The majority are in grade 11. Okay. Let us start by the first uh, part of our uh, program today. So as we mentioned earlier, we are going to allow our students to share their stories, to tell us why did they join the program, what was interesting in uh, the major they pursued, and what they are currently doing now after graduating from the program. So I'm going to start with uh, Ms. Julia Zaidan. Julia, tell us a little bit about your experience at the faculty. So you are a health communication graduate. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Ahmad. So hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So I'm Julia Zaidan, and I graduated last June from the BA in Health Communications program with a minor in Media Studies. I currently work at the Center for Public Health Practice at the Faculty of Health Sciences in AUB as the project coordinator on a mental health project that aims to help students better navigate mental health issues, promote health, uh, mental health seeking behaviors for services and supports available on campus, and sensitize mental health in the AUB community, including faculty and staff. We developed uh, an e-course and are now establishing a mental health peer-to-peer -peer support program, and um, we plan on publishing around two to three papers on this initiative. Later on, um, I plan to explore the workplace and other domains, which is uh, allowed to by my degree, such as the humanitarian field or uh, health management aspect before deciding what master's degree I would like to pursue. Uh, initially, I wanted to become a doctor like most of our society encourages. I applied for bio and I was ready for that track and that lifestyle, but I didn't pursue it though, not because I'm, I'm not good enough or smart enough, but because I realized that it's not the kind of change maker I want to be. I've always been someone who is uh, passionate about instigating change in the world, and this program nourished this attitude in me. So thinking collectively, learning about how to advocate for change in our societies through the different social and behavioral change theories, applying these theories through the different models uh, during our practical courses, our internship, all of this allowed me to hone the skills and to shape the personality that not only assured me I chose the right major for me, but also helped me land my job, which I'm sure is something you all care about as students. Um, FHS is like a family. So the faculty, the instructors, the professors, the staff, they care about you, they care about your well-being, and they prepare you for the real world through sending you uh, volunteering or internship opportunities, bringing all your courses together full circle, we even had a service learning social marketing course where we applied our knowledge on an actual intervention with uh, different departments. And this intervention actually turned out to be the project that I am now the coordinator on. Um, I'm gonna keep it short. Uh, I believe in our ability to transform the world, to make this world a better place. And my advice to anyone who resonates with this and wants to have a broad spectrum to work with or would even like to pursue a similar career is to make the best of every opportunity. Attend your classes with enthusiasm. Submit assignments, your best, give it your own. And engage in AUB student life and initiatives, even within the faculty, to first build your network and also to develop your character. Because it's important to make sure you love who and what you want to be, because it's only the beginning of a long journey. So that's my, uh, that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. So health communication is a very new field. Uh, you might uh, just stay tuned for the session about the program. And of course, all the questions will be, uh, we will open the floor for questions towards the end. You can ask Julia more for more information 
or our faculty members. Now we move to uh, Camille. Camille Adi is our graduate from the graduate from the from the Division of Health Professions Medical Laboratory Science Program, and Camille is currently pursuing medicine. So, Camille, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, my camera is broken, so I'm sorry about this, but uh, I'll try to stay with you as much as possible. So uh, my name is Camille Daniel Nabil Qadi. I graduated in 2020 uh, from the class of 2020 from uh, Medical Laboratory Sciences. As Ms. Aziz mentioned, I'm already uh, doing my degree, in my medical degree. I'm a third uh, year medical student, soon to be four, actually. Uh, among other things that I've been doing, uh, rather than medicine, uh, I'm currently working uh, on research at the Department of Pathology, which was uh, a, a career interest, actually, that sparked uh, from the time I started uh, Medical Laboratory Sciences. Um, it kind of shaped the way I currently see medicine and what I want to do in the future. So. Uh, to start through my journey, uh, actually, I, when I entered, I wanted to do biology, like most of the uh, most like, you know, mo how most students tend to do. However, when I saw the curricula that medical laboratory sciences was offering, I noticed that it befall under my interest for both for my, my medical, my medical interests, as well as my academic interests. Um, so I decided to pursue it. I finished the degree in 2020 following a four uh, years uh, path. And later on, I went I got accepted into medicine. Um, as I mentioned already, uh, well, from the very beginning, I was interested in doing medicine and I saw medical laboratory sciences as a perfect career path to do as such because you're being introduced uh, through several uh, notations or several uh, fields that are coming from medicine you start to go from uh, from uh, um, hematology bacteriology microbiology pathology a bit of uh, histology and anatomy and as such uh, i saw this as the perfect carrier for what i wanted to do later on uh, for me to, to be honest this was the best years of my life uh, if i had to repeat them i'll definitely redo it again i'll complete i'll advise anyone that wants to pursue not only uh, medicine, but uh, just work in this career path to redo, to, to, do, to definitely do it, especially nowadays, since we all know that we're living in the post-COVID era and where I feel that it's not only expanding, but at the same time, uh, there's great need for us out there. And my advice to you for people that are, well, uh, I'm talking from the perspective of, um, of a, a medical student, I'll say that definitely, go for it if you're good, trying to pursue it it's amazing as uh my previous colleague mentioned before fhs is a family we all know each other we're a small community and for me that was very important in developing my career path i'm still in contact with many of them i still see Ms. khatib almost every day and, and uh, dr anada milham as well uh even when after you live you want to return back and just to say hi <laughs> pass by um and yeah definitely uh, oh, that's everything what I have to say. So don't, don't be Camille. shy. Don't be shy and just ask and pass by and say, always stay in contact. So we're going to ask you more questions towards the end, Camille, about your experience as a uh, medical lab pursuing medicine, because this is an important aspect of the program and about your research uh, interest. So just to highlight also these aspects that are not very uh, known uh, to the students. So now we're going to ask for another uh, alumnus to share um, her story, uh, Wala, from the Medical Imaging uh, Program. So Wala, are you with us? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wala Azakaria. I completed my bachelor's degree in medical imaging sciences last June, and I'm currently doing my master's degree in neuroscience at the University of Pavia in Italy. Majoring in medical imaging sciences has completely shaped my character in a way where it improved in me the skills needed in the work field. So the MIS curriculum requires a specific number of clinical hours to be completed, where basically we were dealing with real practical environment. So we were dealing with real patients and real clinical cases. This improved a lot my social, analytical, and professional skills. For example, before I started my academic journey at AUB, 
I used to be a very shy and a very timid person and engaging in real hospital work has significantly enhanced the way I interact and deal with people. And this is extremely important for whatever kind of field you will be joining in the future. Moreover, Professor Salem Hanoun, which is the coordinator of the MIS program, gave me the best opportunity to volunteer with him on several of his research projects. And these opportunities were the key in getting me accepted in my current master's program as his projects were also related to neuroscience. So you will not only be benefiting from curricular, uh, from curricular work, but also from extracurricular work. Finally, one piece of advice I can give to everyone that will join the Medical Imaging Sciences program is to really benefit from the clinical practicums that you will be taking. And I didn't realize how important these were until I started my uh, master's degree here, here in Italy, as we don't focus uh, throughout my classes a lot on practical work. So throughout the three years that you will be taking here at uh, AUB, you will come across the best uh, clinical cases, uh, medical staff. So for me, the best, the best advice is to just write everything down and review your notes when you get back home. And don't be shy to ask anyone because the staff that you will meet throughout your practical work, they are super sweet. They are so nice. And just take advantage of this great opportunity of having one-on-one -on -one interaction with real case scenarios and with people. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. So uh, now we're moving to uh, the environmental health program. Our uh, student is Ahmad. Ahmad yes, hello everyone. Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me. It feels so good to be back home to, the, to my faculty. So hello everyone, my name is Ahmad Al-Halabi and I'm a fourth year medical student at the American University of Beirut. I have a bachelor's degree in science and environmental health from AOB. And currently I'm working on securing a residency position in family medicine, which is primary care and preventive medicine. So uh, back to my school days, I have always wanted to be a medical physician and uh, I was searching for the bachelor of science that can help me attain that seat in the medical school. And what is better than a degree that allows you to understand the impact of environmental factors on human health than the faculty of health sciences and the environmental health. So I was like, I want to know the dynamics. So I got in. So let me explain more. Environmental health it covers a wide range of topics such as air, air quality, water quality, food safety, waste management, and they all directly or indirectly affect human health. And, and they focus on the preventative approach, which is becoming increasingly important in modern medicine. So uh, my, my experience uh, was full of ups and downs. Definitely the ups are more than the downs, 100%. Uh, and they shaped me into, into who I am now. They shaped my personality and provide me with a set of skills that helped me both professionally and personally. So one of the skills that uh, I'm going to mention is the ability to comfortably present about different topics. It's, we all know that uh, this skill is valuable in academia and research. So how to present in a concise manner. So uh, this is one of them. The second, the second point is about research. The faculty heavily encourages us to get involved by providing different courses, such as epidemiology, biostats. And by the way, all of these, I've used them and currently using them in the faculty of uh, family and the faculty of medicine. So one advice is to the future peers is that always stay curious, give it your best and you will make it definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ahmad. So I have to give a disclaimer here that we did not choose the medical doctors to be males on purpose. So this is purely coincidence. Okay, so now we will start with the session. I hope that, that you really enjoyed these uh, stories from our students. And we will, as I mentioned, we will get back to them for, uh, for your questions towards the end. You can write them already in the chat. But now we're going to move to the session about the admissions office. Thank you, Amal. How are you, everyone? Hi, Hi how are you? 
My name is Khalid Kaisi, and I'm an admissions advisor at the Office of Admissions at the American University of Beirut. So I'm going to share with you, uh, first of all, thank you, of course, for inviting me every year to this uh, event, and I'm uh, honored to be part of this event on an annual basis. So um, I'm going to share my screen with you regarding uh, admissions to AUB and all this uh, the information needed for you guys to know what you need uh, to start, can you see my screen? Not yet, Khadun. Yes, now it's showing. Okay, is it in full screen or? Uh... No, it's not in full screen. If you can please fix it. Okay. okay. No, it's so, uh, perfect. So admission to AUB, as you all know, uh, in AUB, we have two types of admission. We have the early admission. The early admission is a criteria-based admission, meaning the students have to have a specific SAT score and a specific uh, rank in their class in order to be accepted uh, immediately to the university. And we have the regular admission. The regular admission is more of a competition-based admission. So anyone can apply. Uh, it does not matter how, how, how much you score on the SAT and the school grades. All that matter is you have a good score. The higher your score, the better your chances to get accepted. So as you can see here, these are our old uh, 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 deadlines. Uh, initially, we have uh, accepted a uh, like, kind of late admission. Exceptionally, we have opened the admission application from March 25 up until April 10, only for the students who have previously sat for the uh, SAT. So if you have done the March SAT or uh, er, the SATs earlier, you can apply. Okay, the, you're going to find the application link. I'm going to uh, show it to you in a, in a bit. So as I said here, this is our early admission. Uh, uh, to get accepted, you have, you have two criteria we ask of you. So the first one is you have to be in the top 25% in your grade 10 and 11. So let's say your class is uh, 20 students, you're going to have to be in the top five. All the other students apply for regular admission. Only the top 25% apply for early. And uh, they have to have a minimum SAT score, as you can see in uh, uh, the slide here. If the students meet those minimum scores and are the top 25%, they will receive an acceptance and a scholarship that I will talk about uh, later. This is the regular admission. As I indicated earlier, it's based 50% on your school grades, grade 10 and 11, and the other 50% is based on your SAT scores. So the higher your scores, the higher your chances of acceptance. It's a competition between you and other students applying to the various majors we have at the university. This is the application link here. Of course, you can just scan it and you can find it on our website. You can just go visit our uh, Instagram page, AUB underscore admissions. You're gonna find it in our link tree. The application is currently open up until April 10. Like I said, only for students who have previously done the SAT. For grade now, 12 students. Uh, yes, on. sorry, grade 12. Because most of our attendees are grade 11. Perfect. So, uh, like I said here, this is uh, the financial aid requirements that we ask of. So when you apply to the university, uh, you will receive after one week, uh, maximum one week, uh, a financial aid email from the financial aid office informing you that you may now start applying for financial aid and it's based on need. So it's a need-based uh, grant given for the students as long as they remain in good academic standings. You uh, submit the, online, the financial aid application online as well. And the, the percentage of financial aid given to students is between 35 to 70%, of course, based on the need and the social status of the family. And these are our scholarships that are offered. We have, of course, the President Mer uh, Merit Scholarship. It's a 100% scholarship given to two stu uh, 10 students, and mainly six of them are sophomore and four are freshmen. And how do they choose the, those students? Mainly those uh, have the highest score in the SAT and their school grades. Mainly they are the top 10 students who applied. Yes, so of course. So yes, so those, the students who apply for this uh, uh, scholarship, uh, uh, no, they don't have to apply for it, but the, the students are eligible for it, mainly have SAT scores of 1450 and above. And later on, we will choose the top 10 students and inform them about 
their uh, acceptance for the scholarship. We also have the early admission merit scholarship. So the early admission merit scholarship, like I said, the students who get accepted on early basis receive the, uh, this scholarship. It's a 30% off automatically, and that's different from the financial aid. So if they apply and they get accepted on early basis, they have uh, a 30%. Then the, uh, depending on the financial aid that they receive, it will be added to that 30%. And of course, we have the work study program. It's uh, where our students just uh, come and work in our offices uh, around. The, it depends, of course, with the, with the office, how many hours they will work per week and receive uh, an extra financial aid. And we have the liberal arts scholarship specifically for uh, liberal arts majors. And the financial aid grant is only for next fall. Uh, and of course, we will inform the students for the fall after uh, how much that percentage will be. Uh, up until next fall, that percentage is 20%. So okay. uh, we urge you all, please, to follow our Instagram page, please. Uh, AUB underscore admissions. We will find all the information you need uh, to know about uh, admissions. And please, if you have any, any questions, please contact us. Uh, always, you can just uh, email us at, at admissions at aub.edu.lb. You can give us a call. We are always there to help you. And of course, I'm going to write the email right now in the chat window for, for every, any inquiry. If you need to ask us anything, we are always here to help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Khaldun. So since most of the uh, attendees are uh, in grade 11, I want to uh, emphasize they need to take the SAT so can, they can register for the SAT in the, in the summer. And they have the option of uh, repeating it to get a higher score before submitting their application for next fall. So uh, you can start writing your questions in the chat and we will uh, uh, reply within uh, few minutes after we finish the last uh, uh, session of our uh, program that is uh, purely about the undergraduate programs and where we are going to actually give the floor to the experts, to our faculty members, to talk about the uh, programs. But, uh, Maya, can you please uh, share the presentation? Yes. Sure. Okay, so as you know uh, from the discussion, we have four undergraduate programs in the Faculty of Health Sciences, Medical Laboratory Sciences, Medical Imaging, Environmental Health, and Health Communication. As a start, I want just to inform you that in the uh, American University of Beirut, since it follows the American system, it has different, uh, uh, different settings from the uh, French system. So, all the undergraduate programs are completed in three years, uh, except for engineering, of course. So the duration of the study in any undergraduate degree is three years. Uh, you have the option of pursuing the medical studies from any major, be it medical lab, environmental health, medical imaging, uh, uh, biology. So at AUB, you can pursue medicine from any undergraduate major, all you need to take is to follow the pre-medical track, which means that our set of courses that we refer to as pre-med courses, which is a, a combination of courses, biology, chemistry, physics, that you need to take. And these uh, um, constitute the pre-medical courses and allow you to uh, apply to med school once you finish your, uh, your undergraduate degree. So you apply for the medical school and you have to take a test, which is referred to as MCAT. The uh, another common thing among all undergraduate majors is there are one is that fact that you need to take one third of the courses in general education. So general education is where you actually get exposed to different disciplines other than the one that you are pursuing. So if you are taking uh, scientific courses through the general education, you get exposed to social sciences, to humanities. And this will actually widen uh, your uh, knowledge and will make sure that you have a well rounded personality because you would understand in different topics, not only your major. Now, what is actually peculiar about our undergraduate programs? What makes us different from other degrees? The main thing that makes, uh, makes uh, uh, a difference in our undergraduate degrees is the hands-on experience component. So uh, usually in the uh, first year, you start taking basic science courses. In the second year, you start taking 
major courses in the field. In each of the undergraduate program, you have an internship in environmental health and health communication. It's an internship over several weeks that is taken at any specific uh, uh, institution where you will be in actually doing a training. For the medical laboratory sciences and the medical imaging sciences, you get uh, exposed to a clinical training. So it's actually a training in the hospital in both these uh, programs where you will be actually taking the hands-on experience. You will be trained on how to use the machines or how to actually rotate in the uh, different laboratory sections of the medical lab. So now I'm going to leave the floor to our uh, faculty members to introduce the different programs and give you tangible examples about what they teach and uh, the different topics and specifically about the career opportunities. So we're going to start with the Division of Health Professions and I'm going to leave the floor to Dr. Nada Melhem. Oh, thank you, Ms. Assis, uh, and uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Nada Milhem, and uh, I am the director of the uh, Division of Health Professions and the coordinator of the Medical Laboratory Sciences. Uh, I will not take uh, a long time from the time slots of our uh, speakers, and, but I would like to let you know that the Division of Health Professions, and as it is in front of you, hosts two undergraduate programs, and these are the Medical Lab Sciences and the Medical Imaging Sciences. And uh, we are proud, actually, at the Division of Health Professions to provide our uh, students and graduates with, with an education that, that leads to meaningful, and meaningful careers, and the noble ones, actually. And if we have learned anything during the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the events that affected our entire globe is the fact that healthcare professionals and specifically, you know, uh, uh, graduates of the Division of Health Professions are in high demand, uh, not only in the Middle East and North African region, but also globally. They are needed in order to guide diagnostics. They are needed in order to implement and to design new tools for diagnostics of diseases in order to, to uh, um, determine the path of treatment and follow up on that path of, uh, of treatment. And this is why our motto is basically serving health and beyond. Uh, I'm very happy that you are all here to listen more about uh, our uh, uh, degrees. I would like to let you know that I'm a proud graduate of the Division of Health Professions at the Faculty of Health Sciences and specifically the Medical Laboratory Sciences. And I came back to serve my uh, beautiful faculty and university as well as program. Uh, uh, all of them invested in me and uh, I'm happy to give back at this stage. Uh, I would like to uh, leave the floor now to our first speaker uh, introducing the medical laboratory sciences, Mrs. Rula Al-Khatib. Mrs. Rula Al-Khatib uh, is actually the previous coordinator of the medical lab sciences, and she's the registration advisor for all the, the, the students of the Division of Health Professions. So uh, she holds a huge uh, responsibility and uh, the Division of Health Professions can do anything without her. Uh, <laughs> after Mrs. Khatib, we have Dr. Salem Hanoun, uh, and Dr. Hanoun joined us in two years, and we're very happy to have him. He's the coordinator of the Medical Imaging Sciences Program. So uh, uh, I'll leave the floor to Mrs. Khatib first. Thank you, Dr. Milham, for the introduction. <laughs> so we'll be starting with uh, the Medical Lab Sciences, and uh, uh, so let's define the role of medical laboratory scientists. Medical laboratory scientists are highly skilled professionals who conduct up-to-date laboratory tests to assist physicians in the diagnosis as well as in the treatment of diseases. In addition, laboratory tests performed by the medical lab scientists are crucial to follow up patients during and after treatment. So as you can see, uh, they they are part of a medical team responsible for the health and well-being of patients. Therefore, our graduates should acquire theoretical knowledge 
as well as practical skills in the various disciplines of this specialty. In their first year, as mentioned by Ms. Assis, our students take basic science courses, including biology, chemistry, physiology, and biochemistry, in addition to languages, humanities, and social science. In their second year, they start their major courses in the various areas of medical laboratory sciences. And during their senior year, they get hands-on experience in the field of medical laboratory sciences at UBMC. They get exposed to state-of-the-art diagnostic tools in the various disciplines of this specialty, including bacteriology, virology, parasitology, immunology, hematology, blood banking, cytogenetics, and clinical chemistry. How do doctors diagnose diseases based on the results of lab tests? Suppose a patient is manifesting cough, a sore throat, headache, and a low-grade fever. These symptoms could be suggestive of any upper respiratory infection that could be bacterial or of viral origin, as you know. So various lab samples should be taken from the patient and sent to different areas of the lab to confirm the diagnosis, to rule out other possible causes that could be responsible for these signs and symptoms. For instance, blood should be sent to the hematology lab to perform a CBC, and the CBC stands for complete blood count. This will show an increase in the total count of white blood cells, which will confirm the presence of an infection. In addition to that, a certain a particular uh, type of white blood cell will also help in confirming the diagnosis. For instance, if you check this uh, uh, white blood cell to your right hand side, it's a, a neutrophil, and if these cells are increased, this will confirm the presence of a bacterial infection. Whereas if you have an increase in the other uh, cells that are small with a round unsegmented nucle uh, nucleus, these are the lymphocytes that, if increased, would favor the diagnosis of a viral infection. So this is actually very important in directing the treatment because, as you know, viral infections are self-limiting and do not respond to antibiotics. With these symptoms that we have mentioned, a throat culture should also be sent to the bacterial lab to check for the growth of bacteria. If bacteria are detected on the plates, another test is done also in the bacteriology lab to, to, to decide on the antibiotic of choice to treat this particular infection. And in addition, various samples should also be sent to the molecular diagnostic lab to rule out viral infections such as COVID-19, influenza, respiratory syncytial virus infection, among others. Let's take another patient with diarrhea. In that case, a stool sample should be sent to the bacterial lab to check for a number of organisms, including Vibrio cholera, that has lately re-emerged in certain areas of the country. And if that patient looks dehydrated because of diarrhea, a blood sample should be sent to the clinical chemistry lab to check for certain minerals or electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, or chloride. If a patient needs a blood transfusion, you all know that blood from the patient and from the donor should be tested in the blood bank section to see if they are compatible in order to avoid transfusion reactions. We can also perform some tests in the serology lab to assess our immune status following infection or vaccination. And last but not least, quality control is emphasized across the disciplines to ensure both precision and accuracy of lab results. Can we move to, yeah, thank you. Following graduation, about 26% of, of our graduates apply to the School of Medicine. And as mentioned by uh, Camille, they truly believe that this program equips them with a very solid background to succeed in the field of medicine. About 24% pursue a Master of Science or a PhD in various disciplines of medical laboratory sciences, including bacteriology, virology, immunology, etc., 
or in basic sciences such as physiology, morphology, biochemistry, or even a master in public health. Finally, around 45% are employed after graduation. We are actually distinguished by immediate employability. And as mentioned by Dr. Milhem, there is always a great demand for medical lab scientists in Lebanon and abroad. Our graduates might work as laboratory scientists in hospitals or in private labs, as medical representatives or managers within pharmaceutical or medical equipment companies, as researchers in university laboratories, or as healthcare workers in governmental and international organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Rora. Dr. Hannoun. Hello, uh, I'm Salim Hannoun. I'm the coordinator of the Medical Imaging Sciences. Uh, thank you also to Dr. Milhem for the introduction. And uh, so, if you are interested in fulfilling an exciting career that combines uh, both technical skills with uh, emotional intelligence and uh, problem solving, then I think medical imaging sciences program might be the perfect fit for you. So as a medical imaging scientist, you'll be responsible for diagnosing various disorders and diseases by studying the structure and the function of the body's organs. You will work closely with the patients and be a vital part of their treatment and recovery process. And it is a rewarding profession that can make a real difference in the people's lives. And as a medical uh, imaging scientist, you will be part of a dynamic and growing field that offers endless opportunities for personal and professional growth. Whether you are interested in working with patients directly or pursuing research and development, this program can help you achieve your goals. Plus, the field of medical imaging is constantly evolving, meaning that you will always have the chance to learn new skills and new techniques throughout your career. This will ensure that you will never get bored and you will always be challenged in your work. At the AUB Medical Center, you will receive a hands-on training, as well as said early on, uh, in a variety of imaging modalities, including general radiography, computed tomography, uh, nuclear medicine, MRI, and ultrasound. You will also work alongside experienced healthcare professionals and gain valuable real-world experience. But it is not just about technical skills. We also teach you how to communicate sensitively with the patients and develop your emotional intelligence. And with the rapid development of the new technologies, you will need to stay up to date and adaptable to succeed in this field. So after graduation, you will have a range of exciting career opportunities uh, and exciting career paths to choose from. And these include pursuing a career in radiography, uh, applying to med school, as uh, Ms. Rula er said earlier, pursuing a master's in biomedical engineering, uh, go into marketing imaging machines, or becoming a radiation protection, or do what uh, Wala did, go into uh, graduate studies and uh, pursue a master's in neuroscience. So the possibilities are endless. And don't forget about the benefits also. As Dr. Milhem said, medical imaging scientists enjoy competitive salaries, excellent benefits, and the satisfaction of knowing that they are making a difference in, uh, in people's lives. Plus, the uh, job outlook for this field is excellent, meaning they are, that there are plenty of job opportunities that are available. So if you are looking for a career that combines technical skills with empathy and problem solving, then MIS is the perfect fit for you. Apply today and start a journey with us towards a fulfilling and an exciting career in healthcare. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanun. Before we move uh, into the environment and health, I'm going to take a minute and ask you to please respond to this question. So we need to know from which high school uh, you are, so please specify the name of your school. 
guys. So participants, please indicate the name of the school. Okay, great. We need more participants. So not all answered. Ten more. Okay, we are still short of five. Yeah, two more seconds. We need five more answers, please. I'll end it, uh, although not everyone answered, but uh, just for the sake of time. Okay, so now we're going to continue the presentations and we will leave the floor to Dr. Jumana Nasser to tell us about the environmental health program. Thank you, Amal. Uh, I'm Jumana Nasser. I'm the uh, advisor of undergraduate students at the environmental health uh, program. Basically, I would like to start by saying uh, to students that while you are choosing your major, it's very important to try to think a bit outside the box and try to think of uh, non-traditional majors that may open the door to a wide range of job opportunities. And environmental health is one of those majors, although it's not a new uh, major. Uh, so it's a three years major that includes courses and hands on experience in the form of lab work, field trips and an internship. Uh, our program uh, consists, as I said, of courses and uh, our courses provide fundamental knowledge of environmental health with emphasis on evaluation, on prevention and on control of major environmental problems. So you will learn about all of those topics that you always hear about in the local, regional, and international uh, media. So uh, our program includes courses like air pollution, what's air pollution, what's indoor air pollution, what's outdoor air pollution, what are the standards relating to air pollution, and what are the health impacts of air pollution. Uh, we have a course on water and wastewater quality control. In that course, you will learn how to check for water quality, how to know whether its quality is suitable for different types of uses. Is it potable, not potable? If it's not of good quality, how can you treat that water to make it of good quality for different types of uses? For wastewater, to check for its constituents to know how to treat that wastewater to make it reusable for different purposes, knowing that wastewater treatment and reuse is a very important thing when we are thinking of trying to reduce water scarcity around the world, knowing that water scarcity is a major problem nowadays. We have a course on food safety. In that course, you will know how to make sure that the food is safe, how to make it safe, how to keep it safe, how to go for quality control relating to food premises. We have a course on occupational health. And in this course, you will deal with occupational settings and you will learn how to make the workplace a healthy uh, workplace. Uh, in the toxicology and risk analysis course, 
you will look into the different toxic agents in the environment and how do they affect living organisms. You will learn how to analyze and assess the different risks around you. In the solid waste management course, you will learn how to manage solid waste, be it domestic, be it hazardous. And you all know about the waste crisis that Lebanon faced and maybe is still facing. And this is a common problem in many countries uh, around the, the world. In addition to uh, these courses, uh, we uh, help our students to um, uh, implement their theoretical knowledge in real life situations through the internship. So all our students will go to do their internships in their senior year. And this internship aims at supplementing the theoretical knowledge with real life experience. Now, the main question for all of you, I'm sure, uh, where do we work? Uh, basically, some of our students, they join the medical school because, uh, as Ms. Assis said at the beginning of the presentation, in our program also, we have two tracks, the regular track and the pre-med track. If you're following the regular track, you graduate after three years with a BS in environmental health, you can continue your graduate studies or uh, uh, join the workforce. If you join the pre-medical track, again, after three years, either you continue different graduate studies or join the workforce, or you can uh, sit for the MCAT exam and try to apply to the medical school, because within these three years, you will be also exposed to the different uh, pre-medical courses. So some of our students join the medical school, others go for graduate studies, and a big majority join the workforce. Basically, uh, you find our graduates all over the place. Uh, they work in international organizations like UN agencies and others. They work in ministries, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Public Health, Ministry of Energy and Water. They work in non-governmental organizations, which are many now when it comes to the environmental field. Uh, they work in big hospitals. You know that hospitals now um, seek accreditation and having environmental specialists is important for that to deal with the air pollutants, with the solid waste of these hospitals, which is infectious and sometimes hazardous, to deal with the wastewater, uh, to deal with the water quality of the patients. They work in big industries, knowing that now industries are trying to seek certifications like the ISO and others, and this needs environmental professionals. They work in engineering firms doing EIAs, which are environmental impact assessments. Basically, big engineering companies, before having the permit to start any project, be it a highway, a school, an airport, they need to conduct something called environmental impact assessment to check what are the negative impacts of that project on the environment. And accordingly, either they need to change their proposal uh, or uh, they can just uh, start uh, the project. So people doing EIAs and these engineering companies are environmental health uh, graduates. They work in petroleum administrations and petroleum companies in the sector of occupational health and safety. They can work, of course, in research centers and uh, in uh, academia. So uh, basically, um, again, uh, looking outside the box, trying to think outside the box is very important nowadays while choosing your major. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, last but not least, we are going to uh, ask Dr. Maya Donajum to explain a little bit about the new uh, major uh, artifact of health sciences, BA in health communication. Uh, yes, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Mayanda Kanj and I'm the advisor for the health com communication students. Now this is like Amal said, is a very new program. Uh, we started in 2019 and Julia who spoke to you at the very beginning is one of the first graduates from this program. Uh, this is an accredited program and it uh, so probably you are wondering what is health communication. It's basically the art and science of communicate thing to of communication to promote health so if you recall i mean what you saw during the covid epidemic lately uh, everything you saw from the campaigns on tv in social media on billboards on tv this is all health communication work so um, if you are somebody who cares about health who cares about the environment who cares also about using and uh, social media and uh, communication tools to talk about health then this is a major for you 
So it is different. It is a new major and it is, you know, like, uh, you know, one of those out of the box majors that you might want to consider in your in your in your uh, uh, university education. So um, in health communication, you take different courses, courses in both in media studies and in public health. And the courses that you take allow you to have different competencies. Uh, they allow you to really uh, be able to understand people's behaviors, why people, for example, some people smoke, why people don't eat healthy, and for example, why people not get the COVID vaccine, why people don't wear masks, and why some do. You also take courses to um, on uh, to, to learn how to use social media to talk about health, uh, how to create YouTubes, how to work on Twitter to communicate about health issues. You also take courses in social marketing uh, where you learn how to package a health behavior uh, to promote its use among a certain population. You learn how to create patient education pamphlets, how to design health campaigns. And all of these um, um, skills that you learn in the courses allow you to work in multiple areas and multiple sectors. Next slide, please. Yes, okay. So uh, uh, you can work, I mean, the skills that you obtain actually are both in public health and in health communication. And this uh, opens a wider scope for you to get employed. Uh, you can work in international organizations like uh, UNICEF, like uh, WHO. You can work in government uh, organizations, ministries of public health, education, social affairs, in NGOs, civil society that work on health and environmental issues. You can also work in advertising and marketing companies with a focus on health in hospitals as well. And now we know that um, hospitals who for accreditation purposes are supposed and are expected to have uh, patient education units. So you can be somebody who works in this ed health education, um, patient education units to communicate to patients about different health aspects. So it's a wide, really, um, you have, a, I mean, a wide choice of uh, placements to work at. You can also choose to continue your graduate studies. For example, from the first cohort, um, uh, four of them are continuing their master's studies and uh, pursuing degrees in gender studies, global health, and other areas of interest. So good luck to all of you. Thank you. So Thank you, Dr. Kanj. Uh, so now, uh, before we move to the Q&A, uh, again, let's take one second and uh, ask you a question. So if you can please answer, how did you hear about the webinar? So just waiting for more response. Okay, great. Uh, so now I'm going to, uh, I encourage you to please start uh, sharing uh, your uh, questions in the uh, chat. Uh, there are a few questions that were uh, raised and I'm going to read them and we're going to uh, answer them. So, we have one question uh, from Joy about the internship. 
Uh, Joy is asking whether the internship are provided by the universities. Yes, the uh, internship are provided by the uh, department concerned. So whether we are talking about environmental health or about health communication, it is the advisor who introduces you to the different options that you have. So, so you actually select an internship of your uh, choice and that you are really interested in. Uh, Philippe is asking, uh, was the, okay, did they already choose the students for the president's scholarship? So if you are talking about the president's scholarship, Philippe, this uh, scholarship is based on, from the name, it's based on merit. So it cannot be issued before all the acceptances are out. So once the acceptances are out, they will take the highest scores, the top 10, and these top 10 students will receive the merit scholarship. Uh, also, Philippe is asking, does someone applying to medical lab need to do a lot of extra credits for pre-med? Uh, Mrs. Khatib, if you can answer this, please. Actually, they are required to take 10 additional credits. Our regular students have to complete a total of one or three credits, and students following the pre-medical track have to take 113 credits. Usually, these are taken during the summer. Or during, and, uh, yeah, they, they can complete the requirements in three years. So our students take one additional summer, this is the summer of the first year, in order to complete the regular and the pre-medical requirements in three years. Uh, Yara is asking, what is the financial aid grant scholarship based on? Uh, from the name, it's a financial aid grant, so it's based on financial need. Even the new presidential grant that was mentioned by Khaldun as uh, the president's grant, it's also based on financial need. So you have to submit your application to the financial aid office. This is a separate application from the admission application. Uh, okay, Joy is asking, uh, does AUB have... Has a neuroscience program. So neuroscience is not another graduate degree. Neuroscience is a graduate uh, degree. Uh, at AUB currently, uh, there is no neuroscience program, but there are different options uh, available, of course, uh, in different disciplines. Well, again, Yara is asking, are these undergraduate programs and pre-med? Yes, Yara, all these undergraduate programs are pre-med. Philippe, are there any scholarships based on SAT? SAT alone uh, cannot be uh, one indicator to, to give the scholarship. So uh, as was mentioned by uh, Khaldun, from, uh, who is the representative from the admissions office, the scholarship that could be based on SAT and um, the ranking school in the school. Kids. This is the uh, merit that is given for early admission only. So if you are top in your school and you got a high score in SAT, you can apply for early admission and you can get a 30% merit scholarship. So it's all based on the combination of your SAT score and the school grades. Yara, are these medical programs offered in other universities abroad? So these are pre-med programs, not medical programs. If I got your answer right, Yara. Uh, ideally, we don't want you to <laughs> pursue your degrees abroad. We want you to stay here. But of course, you can do your search online. You can see that there are many uh, universities that offer, offer similar programs or uh, um, programs in both disciplines, public health and uh, health professions. Okay, Sarah is asking, if I want to apply to medical imaging and graduate with a degree, can I directly apply to med school by taking the MCAT? Uh, of course not. So this is the concept that I was trying to explain about the uh, pre-medical uh, track at AUB. So it's quite different from medical schools and other universities uh, who follow the French system. So if you apply to the French system, then all USG, then you directly enter into med school. Here it's different. The idea is that you get a degree. You might change your mind and decide not to pursue medicine. You want to do graduate studies, you want to work, whatever you want to do. So the 
beauty of the uh, American system is that you, it allows you to reflect on your choices and it has a wide variety of options to choose from. You might be thinking in your first year to pursue medicine and you might change your mind in the second year. So you wouldn't be losing your, your years because eventually you will graduate with a degree within three years. In your third year, you apply for the MCAT. Once you apply to the MCAT, you can apply to med school. Okay? So uh, the med school will, you will finish your med school in four years. The total number of years will remain seven. So if anyone from the uh, faculty members would like to add something to this. So Dr. Hanoun, you wanted to add something? Uh, no, you said it all, but I wanted to add something regarding the neuroscience question that uh, was asked yes. earlier. Earlier, uh, We don't have an uh, undergraduate uh, program for neuroscience, but we have a master's degree in neuroscience that is offered at the Faculty of Medicine. So yes. you, can, uh, you can apply to it after you graduate uh, uh, from uh, any program. Okay. Uh, Lara, is medical lab considered pre-med if you want to study medicine? Yes, we said that all undergraduate programs are pre-med. Uh, Joy, are there uh, so best Lara or Joy? I'm so other participants, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, Joy, are there any programs we can do as students that might help us to get into university? And this is not a very clear uh, question. What do you mean? Joy, I didn't get your question, so please. Maybe at ask. the level of the school, if they have any uh, opportunities at, in school to do to improve their yeah, chance. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, currently, the admission is purely based on grades. So school yes. grades okay. and uh, uh, the university is looking into other opportunities. So, Recently, they, they initiated a scholarship for athletes. So this is something that you can uh, consider. Uh, but there's nothing specific for community service, for example. We do encourage community service at school, but currently this is not included uh, in the criteria. Considered... Of admission. Hmm. Exactly. Jana, what are the scholarships if, if, offered? If I may, uh, Ms. Assis, just for Mahim. community service, thank you. Uh, yes. Actually, at EB, you know, we don't want you to only focus on uh, the courses and the uh, different uh, parts and components of the curricula that we have, you know, introduced you to. And this is a glimpse only of uh, these courses. But at EB and at the Faculty of Health Sciences, we actually have extracurricular activities. And by extracurricular activities, not only volunteering for research, but also, you know, serving EB, the faculty and the community. So we have societies, we have actually the health sciences societies. We do have chap uh, different clubs at EB whereby you could serve and continue, uh, you know, the community service that you have started during your school years and then continue that and actually, you know, uh, uh, elaborate more on it and expand it uh, in terms of service. And this will help you to actually apply to different types of awards uh, at the Faculty of Health Sciences, as well as EB uh, at large, using uh, these types of uh, extracurricular activities. Thank you, Dr. Malham. So Jana is asking, what are the scholarship offered for health communication major? Because I heard you give scholarships for it. Uh, the scholarships are not specific to the health communication major university-wide. So uh, whatever program you apply to and you are accepted to, if you are you fit the criteria, you are eligible for scholarship X, you will get it, regardless of the major. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hrag is asking if the top 10 get the presentation scholarship, but about the top 100, top 1,000, do they get around 50 or 30 percent? They get a financial aid percentage based on their need. It's very important to distinguish between scholarships that are based on grade, purely based on merit, from the uh, financial aid grant that is uh, based on financial need. So the, student, the applicants would have to submit a financial aid application providing information about expenses, about the uh, 
employment status of the parents, about the siblings, the family income. And based on studying this uh, profile, the, the socioeconomic status of the family, they decide on a certain percent, which ranges between 30% to 70% financial uh, aid. So there are many opportunities available, but of course, uh, the applicants need to provide evidence that they are needy. Okay, Alin uh, Abel Muna, what is the best pre med program to pursue medical school? Who would like to answer this from the from our experts? I think Dr. Milhem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are going. So each one of us is going to be biased. Of course, we're going to say the division of health professions, uh, uh, but uh, you know, with evidence base, I could say that because the courses that we actually offer to our students during our junior year and senior year of both the medical imaging sciences as well as the medical lab sciences are actually, you know, the baseline uh, and the basics for advanced courses on the same disciplines that you will take in your MED 3 and MED, in your MED 2 and MED 3 actually uh, as well uh, years. And we do also, you know, introduce you to the clinical experience through your training at the uh, American University of Beirut uh, Medical Sciences. Having said that, all our other programs at the Faculty of Health Sciences also fit the bill and, and uh, you know, uh, because you are going at the end to take the same type of pre-med courses in right. any type of program you join, whether at the Faculty of Health Sciences or outside the Faculty of Health Sciences. So there is a set of courses that Mrs. Khatib and the 10 credits that you need to take in order to be able to apply for the MCAT. And this is across the board, anywhere, you know, and uh, in any type of major you would select, whether you are going, I would hope you would select uh, a, an undergraduate program of the Faculty of Health Sciences. Uh, but uh, uh, even if you select uh, another program at EB, that's our gain, and uh, you can do pre-med anywhere in any program. Thank you, Dr. Mulham. Uh, I would like just add to that, uh, it really makes a difference that you choose a major that you like, that you see yourself in. So choose something that you are passionate about. Of course, we are giving you information very base, in a basic manner today, but if you have more questions to know more about the major so that you can make your decision, please feel free to contact us. You have all the contacts uh, of the Faculty of Health Sciences on our website. Um, there are questions related to the President's Scholarship. So two questions from uh, Yasmina and from uh, Mr. Habib Asfahani. So how much would uh, the, the average should be to get the 100% scholarship So I'm, uh, or the president merit scholarship? So I'm going to answer these. Uh, uh, it's, it's basically the same question. Also a third question um, related to the merit scholarship. Just let me recap that all the applicants to undergraduate programs are assessed based on two criteria. The school grades, grade, 10 and 11, this is 50%, and the other 50% is on set. So who gets the merit scholarship? Mira Hikuno had top 10%. If you have like 1,000, I'm throwing a number, this is not an actual number. If you have 1,000 applicants who have applied to AUB, and uh, we, come, we of course have to calculate their scores, and they get scores based on the set and school grades. The top, the highest grades, the top grades are the ones who are going to get, uh, the applicants who have the top grades are the ones who are going to get the merit scholarships. So really they are uh, high achievers who are going to get very high grades on SAT. And you know that the grade on SAT, you have the math and the verbal. It's over uh, 1600. So they get like 1450 over 1600 and they have to be top in their schools. It's really very competitive. You have to be ranking first in your school, have the highest SAT score to get the uh, merit scholarship. Okay, I have a question, have a question add, about nuclear maybe, medicine. <laughs> maybe add that that is not only at the level of the faculty of health sciences, it's at the level of the university at, uh, at large. Correct. 
Correct, Dr. Hanu. This, this is at the level of AUB, not faculty specific. Uh, so can you please explain more about the nuclear medicine? Nuclear medicine, uh, this is uh, a modality in, uh, uh, in uh, the medical imaging sciences uh, program in, uh, that is, uh, well, uh, this is a nuclear medicine. We uh, give the patient uh, a nuclear agent. We inject it uh, through uh, IV. And this uh, nuclear agent will go to uh, certain parts of, uh, of the body that are uh, related uh, uh, to the radiopharmaceutical that we uh, have injected. And we have a camera. And this camera, this gamma camera, will detect the location of uh, where this radioisotope has uh, landed in the body. And we will have either hotspots uh, where we have uh, 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 huge quantities of uh, this radioisotope that have uh, uh, accumulated in, uh, let's say, in the liver, or we could have go, uh, cold spots where we have no accumulation of, uh, of radioisotopes. And we use this nuclear medicine for uh, uh, different uh, diagnostic uh, 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 tool, uh, diagnostic uh, tests uh, for uh, the thyroid or the par parathyroid uh, exams. We use it also for bone cancers and other types of cancers also. So that's it. Thank you, Dr. Hanou. Um, does the does PMED help me pursue vet studies? It's a completely different thing. I wouldn't say, uh, yeah, Mava, you have veterinary medicine is completely different, so you cannot uh, compare it to medicine. It's preferable that you start with a veterinary. There are BS degrees in veterinary science, so it's better that you start from the beginning. Uh, with veterinary science. Uh, can you tell me more about the athlete scholarship? Uh, it is just something that was, so this is Mr. Asfahani who's asking this. This is what, this was newly uh, established at, uh, at AUB. Actually, we received, this was announced last week uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be given, um, applicants have to apply and it is competitive and they will, they will, uh, study the portfolio of the applicants and select the, uh, if you are really interested in knowing more, you will need to uh, check with the Dean of Student Affairs and the Student Affairs Office at AUB. Jason, are there any orientation and shadowing programs opportunities for students to look more into the campus and the community? So we have started uh, at the Faculty of Health Sciences to give the opportunity to students to come and uh, spend uh, a couple of hours uh, at our faculty to look at the facilities and uh, attend classes. Uh, so this is the shadowing day that we are offering to students. Uh, they will really need to be interested uh, in the program. Uh, we will help them know more about it, about the courses. They can attend classes, as I mentioned. We give them usually a, a uh, we prepare a program and share it with them. So yes, this opportunity is available. So Tamir Yunus is asking, if I want to study medical lab, but I want to take the pre-medical course, how can I apply to the pre-medical course? So uh, Tamir, is it Tamir? So Tamir, yes. you do not apply. You simply indicate that you're following the pre-medical track during our orientation session at the beginning of the year. So I will be meeting with you as a registration advisor. I will explain about the programs, the regular track, the pre-medical track, and we and you, you will simply follow one of those programs, either either the regular or the pre-med. 
So you do not have to uh, uh, su submit any application to follow the pre-med track. It's simply for you uh, uh, in order to know which program you need to follow in order to complete the requirements. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Khatib. Let me just add uh, one important message about the shadowing day. So um, you might all have received uh, an invitation for the open day that AUB will uh, hold on May 6. So this is a very good opportunity for all uh, students to come and really see campus, see the faculties, know more about the programs. And uh, we have fun games related to the majors that you can participate in and you can actually uh, win that shadowing day opportunity with us. So uh, we hope to see you on May 6 on campus. Mm -hmm. Ghazal is asking, you have to choose one of these undergraduate programs in order to complete studying in med school. Uh, these are possible undergraduate programs. As you know, we are covering only the Faculty of Health Sciences. AUB has six faculties. So you can actually pursue uh, majors in the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, uh, nursing. So you have a lot of opportunities. Uh, if the applicants, when, you, when uh, you're going to uh, fill the application, you will see that you have these majors listed under the different faculties. So you really have a lot of options to pursue medicine. You can, might decide to start with psychology as an undergraduate degree and pursue medicine or even economics or business. So options are really very, uh, very uh, wide. And that's why we always emphasize on the fact that students or applicants should love the major they are choosing, even if their uh, end uh, goal is to get into medicine. Because what if they change their mind, they will have a career, a profession uh, in their hand. Before getting into more questions, I want to take a two minutes break to ask a questions to our uh, faculty members. So this is just a break from the questions about scholarship and financial aid, although I know these are very important <laughs> and pre-med. <laughs> okay. Um, so to our faculty members, to our experts in the field. So we have uh, shed the light on the undergraduate programs, on the uh, teaching aspects of our uh, uh, programs. Uh, I would like to know from your perspective, during the last uh, two years, two to three years, we all went through uh, a series of crises, and uh, maybe one of them is the pandemic. From your opinion, as a uh, faculty member expert in virology or medical imaging or health communication, how would you reflect on uh, uh, what happened? As a researcher, what did it add to the profession? What are the aspects that you would like to highlight other than the undergraduate program that we uh, that we just uh, discussed today. Dr. Mirham, we start with you. Um, thank you, Ms. Assis. This is a great but a tough question. Uh, however, mm. um, you know, I'm I would like to let to let the attendees know and our uh, you know pool of students to know that I'm a virologist and immunologist by training. And I did a master's degree in medical uh, microbiology and immunology, uh, also at EV, but my PhD and postdoc were in the United States. And uh, so, so I have a master's in bacteriology, but a PhD and postdoctoral fellowship in virology. <laughs> and so, you know, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, uh, well, don't get me wrong, but this was, you know, something to my research lab and my interest, a great challenge and opportunity to start exploring the dynamics of the virus, but also to, to learn more. And so 
I was basically in heaven, you know. <laughs> I, I have a research program on HIV, so I have part of my research program on HIV and non-AIDS comorbidities. And I do have another group of my team and, uh, you know, research program on viral diarrheal diseases, specifically norovirus, whereby we all have it at any point time of the year uh, by, you know, uh, uh, taking uh, contaminated food or water and how many times all of us have suffered from an acute short onset, you know, a few hours of diarrhea and abdominal pain and that's it. So that's norovirus for you. Also, I have, and then came COVID-19. And so I, I made that decision not to leave my two research programs, but actually to work on COVID-19, but not only to actually satisfy the researcher in me, but also to support the country uh, in the fight against the pandemic. And so, um, and I'm saying that because uh, I have five different components of, HIV, of COVID-19 research taking place, but all of these were actually used in order to support the Ministry of Public Health in the decision-making process about testing, about uh, pooling of samples, about vaccination. Uh, uh, and so I'm a member of the National Committee for Communicable Diseases. So, so I had that input, that link, you know, policy to uh, uh, research using what we know and what we do as well. Uh, I'm also, I was also invested uh, as part of the technical advisory group for virus evolution for, at the World Health Organization. So, so don't hate us a lot, but because it's us who named, you know, the COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, the alpha, the beta, you know, the gamma and the Omicron. No, we stopped at the Omicron stage. So, uh, and, but, but, but this field actually, and during the COVID-19 pandemic and, and the, the, uh, the in you know the investment in the the uh, community service and the professional service is actually what makes when I mentioned noble careers and when I mentioned you know uh, uh, serving health and beyond this is what I meant actually it's not about the courses only but but these courses made us be what we are now and of course you know, uh, uh, being able to do graduate studies and, and to, to uh, uh, serve our community and our country. So, so I had, I was, I was really happy to serve uh, Lebanon and the region and, and uh, uh, you know, and I'm leading the national surveillance program. So when you hear that we do have uh, Omicron uh, uh, circulating, so that's my lab uh, doing those sequencing for the Ministry of Public Health and for, for the World Health Organization, the global and the regional. And also, you know, so, so uh, we've had the expert COVID-19 committee at AUB as well. And I was a member uh, at this committee representing the Faculty of Health Sciences and the decision-making at all the spectrum as well from uh, do we need to vaccinate to mandate vaccination for our students or not? Uh, do we need to give them two shots or three shots? Uh, do we need to keep on masking or unmask? So all of these, I was involved in them, not only at the national level and the regional and international, but also internal. Of course, I've been hated a lot because my name is all over, you know, uh, on different doors at AV. Uh, but, but we did what we needed to do in order to protect our community based on the knowledge that we have acquired and on the platform of knowledge that the Faculty of Health Sciences gave us, actually. When I think of the cholera, I mean, this is a disease that should be, to me, eradicated uh, or at least eliminated because we cannot eradicate the, the bacterium itself because this is a bacterial illness. Uh, again, uh, you know, being uh, serving on all of these uh, uh, allowed me uh, as well to advance a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, recommendations in order to implement in the different uh, 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 settlements and, and uh, refugee camps for for the protection of water and the prevention of the transmission of the uh, microorganism causing cholera and uh, and so we do also uh, a report and um, and I started also another component for uh, uh, in my lab in order to have evidence based information that we can share with our community and with the Ministry of Public Health and the primary health care centers. And we, we, we have, you know, a duty to do so. Uh, and, and I think, you know, 
public health uh, uh, where, you know, the Faculty of Health Sciences, even though it's a Faculty of Health Sciences, but when you compare it to other uh, schools in the United States, Ivy schools or non-Ivy schools, uh, it is a school of public health. And it's under that school of public health where we have this entire spectrum of health starting from health of the uh, the system uh, and this is where we come you know the medical lab and the medical imaging but also the environment and this is where the environmental health and then what links all of these together for a better uh, uh, communication of risks of exposure of treatment is the health promotion and uh, uh, health you know, communication uh, health communication uh, mm -hmm program department that we have so so you are in safe hands uh, with us and i'm sorry i was too long <laughs> very Thank interesting you, <laughs> Dr. Kans. okay so i i think uh, dr milham gave a very comprehensive <laughs> overview of many of the issues that we all i mean I agree with her as well um, what I can I can just add a few things actually. I believe the epidemic and the multiple crises we've been through uh, were in one, if we want to say not useful as well, but they made people understand what public health is all about. We, you know, I've been working in public health for many, many years. It was always a struggle to explain what is public health. Now I think people do understand this. Mm -hmm. So this is if you want to be optimistic, this was a good outcome of this epidemic of the COVID. We also, it was, it also became easier for me to explain what health communication is all about. So what is health communication? So I just give the examples of the COVID, what people so experienced, and this is what health communication, you know, is. Now, having said this, uh, definitely this, this crisis that we've been through opened for us as, as academicians, new venues for research. For example, in our department, we are doing uh, research on hesitancy for vaccination. Why not everyone got a vaccine? What were the factors that made some get vaccinated and some did not? Was it about the culture that they are a member of? Was it uh, their perception of the risk to their health? Was it their own beliefs? So again, this was an area of research that was resulted or I mean that was triggered by the current situation. Similarly, another research was about is about really using mobile apps, for example, to understand the, the impact of health messages on vaccines that were sent to groups of the population on a mobile app. So again, uh, these are just some examples of how, you know, how the, the epidemic and the crisis that we've been through really, uh, in some way, guided our work these these recent days. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone would like to add uh, a point? Um, Rola, Dr. Hannon. If, if not, would you like to give them advice before we close? And what is the advice to the uh, students who are applying now with all the uh, crisis we're going through? And I would like to, uh, to add one more thing uh, to what Dr. Milham and to uh, Dr. Mayada have uh, already said. The pandemic have raised awareness, I think, uh, in my opinion, about the healthcare professions that are uh, yes. somehow uh, not very well known, uh, aside from being an MD or a doctor which we in Lebanon, we always go to, uh, to these kind of professions. So uh, medical laboratory scientists, medical imaging scientists, environmental health, etc. all of these have been uh, put to the front. These are the uh, frontliners. Have, they have been the frontliners alongside the, the doctors and the nurses in this pandemic. So, uh, we now know their importance in this field and uh, the amount of sacrifice that they will have to, to, to put in in order to uh, uh, make the people's life better. Thank you, Dr. Hanwan. Uh, I have one question about uh, being a dermatologist. Uh, so again, dermatology is a specialty within medicine. So this is something done after you can you complete your medical degree. So you have to start with an undergraduate degree, go into medicine, and then you specialize in dermatology. There's a question from Aline Abilmunum. 
does the crisis in the official schools affect the possibility of attending EUB pre-med programs? Uh, the crisis, the, the issue is that the, the official schools are not holding classes. So definitely it will affect the fact that the student will not get the degree. They are not attending classes and they will not get the degree. So this is, this is an issue. You need to get a degree at the end to apply uh, to the university. You know, uh, if I may, Ms. Assis, uh, un unless, and, and we do have yani, uh, 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 solutions whereby uh, you might be offered uh, uh, intensive, uh, uh, an intensive education maybe prior to, so, so enrollment prior, prior to enrollment, yeah. So, yes. so I, I would really uh, uh, like you not to be hindered by that fact because a solution is, you know, going to be uh, catered to, to these cases. So, so not, this should not prevent you from uh, applying and moving forward. Uh, because they ought to solve that solution, that, that issue for all of you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Milham. Uh, Lynn is asking, does taking the health communication... Sorry, Ahmad, uh, Sorry it's further. Uh, I think yes. if they don't get to have the, uh, the diploma, what they can do is take a... Respond? Is to apply for freshmen, maybe? Uh, this is not no, currently. No. It's not an no, option. Not. No, no, to no, apply no, for certain freshmen, criteria, uh, you need to be a foreigner, not a Lebanese. Or if you are a Lebanese, you need to be studying in um, in a, a doing a high school diploma. Yes. Okay, and so and Dr. Hanoun is laughing about actually smiling because he saw me smiling about يلعب على system. We do not نلعب على system the faculty of health sciences. Not even AUB. And this yes, is all AUB. over. We don't. No. There are we have to abide by the uh, ministry <laughs> of... Uh, so you have two uh, systems that you have to abide to. The Minister of Education itself, the equivalency of the programs, and the AUB admission criteria. So uh, Dr. Kanjlin is asking, does taking the health communication program make, makes you eligible to continue with nutrition and dietetics? I yes, think we... actually. Yeah, of course you can. I mean, uh, actually in AUB, any undergraduate degree, I think qualified to apply to whatever you want to apply in your graduate work. You know, nowadays education has become, uh, it's no more like you have to be in the same field throughout your life. So you can start off with physics, move to biology, move to chemistry. And uh, this, I mean, so an undergraduate degree allows its flexibility. So yes, this is possible. You can also consider a minor. So if you join a health communication program and this is, and nutrition is something that you love, you can start look, taking a minor. A minor is like, um, a, there are many departments in UB which offer minor programs. Uh, a minor is composed of five courses that the department decides uh, they would offer for to, to complete a minor. So you can join that uh, and take one a minor in nutrition, which is available in AUB. So yes, you can either way, either a minor yeah. or graduate work in nutrition, definitely. Uh, and, I add, uh, Dr. Yeah. Kent, that they might uh, be required to take some remedial courses, a uh, few courses in order to start their graduate studies in a particular because field. It's yeah. the arts, because we're moving from arts to science. Exactly, That's exactly. Why. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nasser? Yes. Uh, maybe we need to mention also to the students that uh, they can go for the double major or the dual degree. So yes. if you're interested in two majors at the same time, say health communication and nutrition or environmental health and nutrition, you can go to, you can do them at the same time. So you can have at the end uh, two undergraduate degrees at the same time. So it's important also to think about that. It would be interesting to many of you maybe. Yes, thank you. Um, there's one question about... Um... From Fitan, does uh, for the hundred percent scholarship do grade twelve grades play a role? Uh, actually, when you apply to AUB, you will be uh, pursuing your uh, grade twelve uh, at high school. That's why only grade ten and eleven uh, play a factor in this. Is biomedical engineering related? Uh, related to what? 
biomedical engineering this is at the faculty of engineering uh, and it's, it's engineering and medicine yes. no so it's in, a graduate in, studies yes it's yes. a level of master's degrees and they have a minor we do have a minor in biomedical so. engineering at the faculty of engineering okay i hope this was a beneficial session to all our attendees uh, thank you for all our we're looking members, forward our to students <laughs> camille would you like to end uh, with a note we started with the students uh, or our graduates and we end with the graduates if you'd like to say anything uh, any of our students is ahmed still uh, around i think they left okay yeah, they left probably <laughs> thank you all for attending for a very uh, beneficial and fruitful session